Okay, so, whoop. Okay, so um, we are live. We're waiting on one person who will be here in probably like 10 seconds. Oh, there she is. <laughs> so, um, how are you guys today? Good? I'm very pink. <laughs> um, Uh-oh. Okay, technical difficulties, everybody. Um, just so you know, we are live, but I'm seeing if anybody's in the thing yet. Um, if I can figure out how to do this on my phone. Apparently the answer's no. <laughs> Let's see here. A little bit? Hi, how are you? We have seven people. Awesome. Hi, seven people. I'm having a little bit of trouble. Um, just so you guys are aware, this is our, well, my first live panel. I'm guessing some of our other people's first live panel, too. Um, and we have just an hour for this. Yeah, apart from testing. Yeah, which obviously doesn't really count. So, <laughs> um, hi, everybody. I hope you're all doing well today. Um, so I think we'll just start with some quick introductions. Um, I just had a massive brain fart. <laughs> so hi, I'm Bluffluffle, AKA Elise. Um, this is my channel, as you probably are aware. Um, we're doing a super fun fantasy bounding panel today, just you know, talking about what fantasy bounding is and also how we do it, how we might want to do it, and you know, our influences, etc. So I will hand it off to whoever wants to go next to say hi. <laughs> yeah! Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. we're not full screen so we're gonna fix that really quick um all right awesome so uh i guess that gets intros out of the way so one quick thing i wanted to go over before we dive into literally everything else was what is fantasy bounding because i'm sure that some people are probably like what is that like I don't actually know what that is. You guys keep talking about it, but I don't know what that word means. So um, basically it's similar to history bounding in that you're bringing in influences from something else into your daily wardrobe or maybe not daily. I mean, I wear like pajamas almost every day. So um, it's definitely not the norm for me, but <laughs> when I go out in public. Um, so basically it's just bringing in fantasy influences into your you know, daily wear and trying to make those fit with what your other clothes are. Um, so I guess we'll start with the questions. I'm just pulling them up on my phone. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we'll go in order. Um, I've got Miss Lumina um, and then Crystal Pegasus and then Singer Sows in that order on my screen. So I guess we'll just go in like a little that order. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Um, we'll make the person who is unsure first 
Yes. Um, so basically, I guess the question is just what are your fantasy influences or fantasy style icons? So like, it doesn't mean you actually have to do them yet, but like, if you were to do it, what would they be? So I'm gonna put us on pause just for a brief moment because um, I'm being told that our audio is not coming through. So let me just fix that really quick. Um, hang on one second. Well, yeah, because they could only hear me, which isn't super helpful. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see here. This should do the trick. Um, can you guys say something really quick? We're, we're checking. There's a, a little bit of a lag, so we're going to have to take a sec and see. And see if anyone says yes or no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, I had it fixed the other day, but um, that only means so much, obviously, when you're actually running the thing live. Yeah, let's see. No one has said anything yet. Yeah, totally YouTube's fault. Totally not mine. No, okay, that's a no. Okay, and let's see. I swear this was working the other day. Sorry, guys. <sighs> oh, good. Okay. I've got my tea. All right, I think that should do the trick. Hello, hello. Be okay. Greetings and salutations. Greetings and salutations. I love that. Oh, my <laughs> Hopefully gosh. this works. I think it will. Um, it looked like it was picking up this time. <clears throat> Yay! Okay, we've got our. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, that's what happens when you switch to uh, a different headset right before a panel. Um, whoops. Yep. So, <laughs> all right, we are good to go. So we're gonna start that over. Um, I'm gonna just say hi I'm Bluffuffle, you know who I am, you're on my channel. I think you know who I am, hopefully. If not, go check out my videos. Um Miss Flamano, go. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um I am Adrian. Uh, my channel is Miss Philomena. I I have been sewing um basically since I was four years old, you know, started with doll clothes and all that stuff. And these days I do pretty much exclusively historical costuming. So that's most of what my channel is about. Was it me next? Yeah. I think it's... It is you next. Hello, everyone. I'm Catherine from Crystal Pegasus Costumes. Uh, I've also been sewing since way back, though I went for teddy bears as opposed to dolls in my <laughs> early sewing. Uh, I make sort of history and fantasy inspired pieces as well as modern corsetry on my channel. And I'm Naomi. My handle is the singer sews. I've been also sewing since I was ten, but I jumped straight into like clothes. So, <laughs> um, and I on my channel have been doing primarily like history bounding and like bust support stuff. But I'm really into fantasy costuming, and I wear a lot of um, fantasy inspired clothes every day. So. Awesome. So I think that they probably heard what fantasy bounding was because it was me saying it. So we'll skip that part <laughs> and we'll go back to uh, sticking the questions on the newbie, <laughs> which is first off, what are your fantasy influences? Okay. Um, <laughs> like, like a lot of us who were, you know, in school in, you know, the late nineties and early aughts, um, my biggest not my first influence, but my biggest one would definitely be Lord of the Rings. So, um, yeah, I just, I loved it. Like, as as a teenager, I thought the elves had the best clothing. Um, as an adult who is not, you know, 
30 pounds soaking wet. Um, I, I'm more into to the idea of the Hobbit Hobbit core stuff now. Um, the Hobbits had more curves anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but probably my very first ever like fantasy thing that I fell in love with was Labyrinth. Nice. Who did not today. want that silver dress? <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I definitely agree with the Lord of the Rings element. I think that's a strong, strong influence from all of us. Um, love me some hobbiting. And along the same lines of elves are beautiful and elegant, and back in the day you think that, oh, yes, the elves. But more and more it's about the hobbits. Um, <laughs> yes, slowly building up my hobbit wardrobe, which is great. <laughs> um, I think other literary um influences i loved Anne mccaffrey's dragon riders of pern series yes. which nice. there were lots of um gowns which you know described on the pages to, then your brain can create what they are uh similarly robert jordan's a wheel of time series which i believe is coming to a an adaption so we'll see what they do with that <laughs> i'm obsessed anyway <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> That's definitely been a big one, and there are, if you haven't read it, there are lots of descriptions of the dresses in that. Some argue too many, <laughs> <laughs> and that some of them seem a bit a fantasy in the in themselves, in the sense of it seems very easy to turn a ready-made dress into a split skirt for riding <laughs> at just the drop of a hat. I'm like, hmm. also, they do it in like a day every time. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't yeah, have so that skill. That's the pinch of fantasy you've got to take when, when looking <laughs> at the dresses. I mean, I, I have made an 18th century dress in a day. Not like a super fancy one, but I have made one in a day before. Mm -hmm. But did it just appear out of thin air? Because that sometimes <laughs> happens in that show, yeah. in that uh, book series. It was already <laughs> Not that was made into a skirt that suddenly then just had enough fabric to turn it into a split. I think my favorite <laughs> thing about uh, The Wheel of Time is how he doesn't understand when you're supposed to wear silk and when you're supposed to wear linen shift. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yes, silk is so wonderful in the summer. Uh, no. No, that's gonna be real sweaty. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. And I, I suppose one final I wanted to mention early influence with your with Miss Philomena's early influence. Uh the Narnia. And in particular, I mean the oh, books, yeah. yes, but the 80s BBC miniseries, like... Oh, yeah, I have so many memories of watching that as a kid. Mm -hmm. Same. Same. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, uh, Naomi? Hi, uh, yeah. Um, in addition to the things that we've already said, like, I'm obsessed with The Wheel of Time. Like, I am so excited about the TV show. Um, <laughs> they just released the first look of the costumes, and it they look very utilitarian and fantasy at the same time, and I'm excited about that because they look like they'll translate really well to everyday clothes from the show. But I also, like, have drawn um, my imagined version of some of the gowns that I would love to do, like, book-accurate or book-imagining costumes from. The Wheel of Time. I'm also, I grew up obsessed with Narnia. Um, obsessed. Um, and then in The Lord of the Rings, I also really like the elves. And that's kind of more where my wardrobe is right now. Although I also do love the hobbits. And um, my first, like, specifically, I made this for fantasy bounding dress is a hobbit dress. Um, but, you know, AON is pretty too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much. That's just true. I, I want to be like sleek and uh, willowy. Yeah, willowy. Although I am also curvy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and let's see. I think I had one in my head that I was gonna say, and then I immediately forgot it as soon as it was my turn. Um, <laughs> well, I just remembered another one while you're thinking. Then. Mm -hmm. Uh, Camelot and Merlin and Arthurian legend. Oh, yeah. yes, where that's where all really good Merlin. fantasy. The Merlin BBC I, show. I... I just remembered what the other one was. Recently, I read um, the series The Queen's Thief, which is kind of set in a fantasy version of ancient Greece. And I had been like mixing and matching 
historical eras and mashing them together and posted a picture of that. And um, my friend said, that reminds me of this character from Atolia. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's also on my radar as well. Um, but most of the time when I make uh, fantasy inspired costumes, it's kind of a mishmash of various historical periods and not directly drawn from any fantasy source, at least so far. <laughs> well, I think that's the thing about fantasy bounding. It's you know, quite related to history bounding, mm -hmm. very similar, but it yeah. just allows a li little bit more freedom, you know, arts involving some other influences as mm -hmm. well. Oh, going back to the Wheel of Time, the Wheel of Time is not medieval fantasy. Um, it's not. Uh, it kind of has the same vibe starting out as the Fellowship of the Ring, but it's it's not the same thing. And a lot of the costumes seem to take their influence from various historical time periods and kind of mash them together and do stuff like that. And so that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, thinking about like the Andorran outfits there, they seem to be described similar to Tudor England. Um, whereas uh, garments from potentially like Ebu Dar or something are more from like Spain uh, in like the 18th and 17th centuries and stuff. So that's a pretty in interesting um, influence from the wheel of time. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's a whole world. It's, it's so good if you like character driven stories. Yeah. It's very long. I understand when people haven't read it. <laughs> I, I also understand when people long. don't like it. I, I, just um, need to, I just need to do it. Yeah, one of my favorite like ser book series, uh, literary series <clears throat> in general, um, I also adore um, Tamara Pierce, uh, specifically her Tortle books rather than the Circle of Magic ones. Yeah. I just, like, I've read most of them, but I never got into that one. But like I love all of the turtle stuff because yes, it's medieval fantasy, but it also like it definitely has influences from other places, not just Western Europe. Yeah, which is also really interesting. And she does describe the clothing a lot in those books too, which I always think that's really, really awesome. Um, I think for me, like most of the references you guys have made, you know, Narnia definitely was a big one when I was a kid. Um, both the older series and the newer mm -hmm. one for like at least the first movie. After that, I think I was a little old for it. Um, yeah. Not seeing it in the theater necessarily, but um, that uh, Lord of the Rings, obviously. And then actually for me, um, the Elder Scrolls video game series, um, <laughs> because it's like pure fantasy. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's obviously like historical influences to it, but um, they got really creative with the costumes, which I love. Plus, you know, gives you the ability to do just a little bit of armor if you want, <laughs> <laughs> which I have no problem with at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And do you, do you bring that into the everyday yeah, well, not the armor so much. I mean, I've seen people jewelry? do that, but I, I don't know if I'm brave enough to do that. But there's definitely like they have similar um, clothing to some of the elves from Lord of the Rings. Like, there's a lot of mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of like velvet and then like metallic embroidery involved, which I think is a really gorgeous aesthetic um, and definitely something I want to do more. Um, and actually, which I'm going to be doing more in the video that is coming out tomorrow. I'm just going to plug that for a second. <laughs> We're doing a uh, fantasy bounding fashion show um, that is going to be posted. And uh, you'll see a little little bit of that in there. But um, yeah, the armor I haven't done yet. Mm -hmm. If I can get brave enough, yeah, I will. Dream project. Yeah, yeah. Unlike, uh, actually, I do have a chainmail necklace and bracelet set, so that's not too far off <laughs> um i think we need to move on to the next question probably so we mm -hmm. kind of did um the influences so next question is where do you get your fantasy clothes if you have fantasy clothes which i guess um adrian i don't know if you have anything for this one and it's okay if you I don't like i have some stuff that's like the closest to like fantasy I have is I made a um, a Victorian pre-Raphaelite style outfit, which is awesome. Victorian fantasy, mm -hmm. and I I made it like I wouldn't really buy stuff. I don't tend to buy clothing like costume pieces, so like I would just 
in the future would be making it myself yeah. generally. Mm -hmm. No, I think I'm similar. I I make most of it, though. I mean, what also op shop uh, op shopping is what we call it here. I think thrifting. Most of you would mm -hmm. say. Um, so a mix and match of sometimes you find a piece, uh, but primarily I, I make most of my costume or costumey sort of outfits. Mm -hmm. um, and I make a lot of stuff, but I also have been purchasing from um, a shop called Moresca, which I'm not sure how I feel about that right now because I've been doing a lot of thinking about cultural appropriation and stuff, but they make really quality pieces, including this uh, corset vest thing that I'm wearing today. Um, and I I think that they're really high quality products. It's just, I'm not so sure about um, the name and the history of the company anymore. Um, but yeah, check them out. They have their own really cool aesthetic that kind of doesn't really look like anything in particular anymore but some of the names are not the best choices <laughs> i feel like we're seeing more and more of that as as you know the time mm -hmm. goes on yeah so especially like with ren fair culture and stuff uh for a long long time it was pretty exclusionary for anyone who didn't look white right um, <laughs> but, uh, that's getting a lot better these Yay. days. So, um, it's easier. You just have to be mindful of those things when you're actually purchasing fantasy pieces. Right. Yeah. I think that's something, you know, we all have to be careful with, um, mm -hmm. just because a lot of, and we've talked about this a little bit before outside of this chat, but, um, about how fantasy influences sometimes they're taking from actual cultures. Um, and we just mm -hmm. have to be mindful of that. Um, yeah. Like acknowledge the culture that it came from and yeah. don't pretend that the garment is from that culture. Yeah. <laughs> or that you are, so, if you're not. Yeah, yeah, or that you are, especially not that. Yeah. Uh, don't take on a, a culture that's not your own. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so acknowledge the influences without like trying to yeah. pretend that this is yeah. a cultural garment. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, like I, I've made a few things. Um, I've made some like Hobbit core stuff. Uh, I definitely do want to get more into the Elven side of things, and I do plan on making a good bit of that. But I also, I'm not gonna lie, I got this at Target. Basically, anything velvet, I'm like, that that looks right. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yeah, we were all raised on the '90s fantasy yeah. movies and shows and That's stuff. So, true. so mm -hmm. gross velvet is my <laughs> I mean, what am I wearing right now? <laughs> yeah. Like crushed velvet. Um, I think probably like uh, the shimmery organza. Like it's, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's somewhere where the, perhaps the fantasy bounding can separate from the history bounding. I mean, it's all mm -hmm. inspiration, but you can get more shimmery, more sparkle, more mm -hmm. things yeah. like that. Like yeah, play with the, the textiles. Yeah. 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 And you, you can stray from like historically accurate fabrics yeah. too. Yeah, that yeah. makes it uh, easier and more accessible. Yeah, it's, mm. that's true. Yeah, and I feel like- you there, We're not we're not holding ourselves to any sort of like accuracy, accuracy standard. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, do I like this thing? <laughs> and is it shiny and pretty? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, yeah, that's definitely true. Like that and I feel like we get you can play with texture a lot. Not that you can mm. with historical garments, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I do feel like, you know, Crush Velvet definitely gives that, like, that fantasy vibe. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Because <laughs> of the 90s. Yeah, it's like, a lot of fantasy stuff in the 90s used Crushed Velvet. <sighs> yep. Yeah. Like Braveheart. Like, let's be honest, oh. Braveheart is a fantasy movie. It's not a historical yeah. movie. <laughs> like Queen Isabella in that every one of her costumes was crushed velvet. Well, I think there was crushed velvet in Merlin too. Now that I think about it, I'm sure. So yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like Morgana's dresses. Oh my god, so good. Love her. Dresses. Oh, and Galavant. I forgot to mention Galavant oh, earlier. Yeah, I, yes. I love Galavant. Watch <laughs> Galavant. You'll love it. <laughs> I've had multiple people tell me that now, so I think it has to be done. <laughs> it's so funny, and it's only two seasons. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. 
It's yeah, what, and the episodes yeah, the are first, 30 minutes long. Yeah, the first season is eight episodes and the second season is 10. So like you can sit down and marathon the both seasons in like an afternoon, basically. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Or you could marathon them and then go back and rewatch it more spaced out. Ah, it, I mean, I, like, I've never done that before. Again. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Um, oh, and none of us mentioned Game of Thrones either. Oh, yeah. Well, I, did not, <laughs> I was not a Game of Thrones person. I thought the, the costumes, costumes were cool. cool. Oh, The Witcher. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Like, I wanna, I wanna look like Queen Palanthe. Oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> or like, um, well, I mean, I personally, I think that Geralt's costumes are really fun. But oh, same. I also want, you know, that shirt that Geralt wears that has like the offset. Yeah, you the crisscross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I want it. Yes, I want it's it because like I'm trying to also build up my um, like less femme wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah, as well. No, I mean that that shirt's really cool. I know exactly what you're talking about, which I don't know if that is sad or good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, uh, The Witcher and like, except for me, I, and not so much the rope dress, but I don't want to like set off the comments with the rope dress. So like, <laughs> the rope dress is controversial. <laughs> the rope dress is very controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a good idea. <laughs> Just the execution, I, I don't know. It would have been yeah, difficult, like though, if you think about it. Like, sewing a bunch mm -hmm. of rope to, I'm assuming, some kind of backing garment. I don't know. Um, that sounds kind of painful. I'm not going to lie. Like, imagine stitching that. Eh. Um, let's see here. So, next question. What can people do if they want to try fantasy bounding? Any ideas? This might be a good time for us to give Adrian some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess thinking about this question in advance, I sort of had a range of thoughts of depending on who you are and what sort of person you are when you try things, maybe jump straight in. I can just fully, um, you know, an outfit that you might have as a costume, look at, scale that back. Like, how do I take this look that I love and scale that back slightly? Alternatively, at the other end, you could just incorporate one little thing, you know, one, maybe some mm -hmm. arm mitts or a little shawl or some jewelry that with a more fantastical flavor. So I think it, I don't think there's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. It's about finding what works for you. Yeah. Typically when I build an outfit that I inspire by fantasy with uh words <laughs> words are hard <laughs> typically when i build an outfit um i will pick like one piece that i want to feature um and make that the focal point especially if it's uh something that's got a really interesting texture or a pattern or a variety of colors um like make that a central piece uh other than that um yeah, basically what Catherine said, like, you could jump in and do like a whole outfit, depending on where you are and what, <laughs> what you need to be <laughs> dressed as. <laughs> uh, or if you're if you're like, I want to incorporate this a little bit, but not so much that I don't look like a real adult. <laughs> uh, just well, add, add something. Um, and then silhouettes as well is Yes. Way, way to bring it in. So yeah, we talk a lot in a, history. A longer counting. flowy skirt or, uh -huh. a, or a, a waistcoat. Speaking of the, the fantasy thrift flip fashion show tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I think that those are really good ways. Like, you know, even if it's just a piece of jewelry or um, like as you were saying, we could do mm -hmm. uh, something historical, but use a fabric that maybe wouldn't have been used or didn't mm -hmm. exist back then since you know polyester is a fairly recent yeah. thing <laughs> or, or you know, another glitter another thing know. that i do <laughs> <laughs> another thing that i do is just like what have i made let me just mash it all together <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i have a an 18th century petticoat then i have like bodices that i've bought um from moresca and like my medieval kirtles and like 
uh, do what Rachel Maxey does, layer a skirt on top of a dress. It's <laughs> yeah. like, throw everything together. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. Until you like how it looks, and then you're like, good, I'm done, let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I have a... oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I was going to move it back to the Miss Philomena and sort of see if we can probe into that a bit more yeah (laughs) because there's something you said when i think we our audio wasn't working is that you come from a more historically accurate mindset and so if you're making something you think if i just do this it would be accurate um yeah like i just i i I, for so long i was focused on i want to do historically accurate costuming Mm -hmm. it's like i also like i was really interested in steampunk like Mm -hmm ago now and then i'm like but why would i do this to my clothing it doesn't make sense it has no functionality like this was also when you know so much of steampunk was you know make an outfit and then glue gears onto it i'm like why (laughs) (laughs) so like for me a big part of it is just like letting go of that Mm -hmm. like of my own personal standards of what i sew and things like that so Mm -hmm. i is Maybe we need to like to just you? practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think we need to be gluing gears onto everything. So that's <laughs> you know. Nonetheless, you that's really for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Taking, taking what you're saying about uh, the historical accuracy thing, uh, what I did for my Hobbit dress, and what I think Catherine did for her Hobbit clothes uh, is we took inspiration from history and then changed, like I I made a legit like 16th century Flemish outfit. I shortened the skirt a little bit Mm -hmm. and like I put embroidery on where they probably wouldn't have had embroidery. And that's how I made my Hobbit dress. I mean, like, looking at, like, the Hobbit style, I definitely see, like, 18th century pastoral influence in mm-hmm. it. Like, I, can, I can see that clearly. Mm-hmm. So, like, that could be, like, an, a, a potential direction to go yeah. in as I... I support this direction. Work on it. <laughs> <laughs> no bias there at all. <laughs> yeah. No, if you, if you like a silhouette from history, um, but maybe you want to update it or make mm-hmm. it your own take the silhouette and change the fabric or change the decoration style or um or what or the sleeve or yeah or the sleeve style yeah, like, and or like a sleeve or puffy sleeve or yeah <laughs> a, a little bit of a metallic embroidery goes a long way too yeah <laughs> <laughs> i might be partial to that <laughs> mm-hmm. i just do metallic weaving it's okay <sighs> or if you're taking influence from like a book you can just think I'm going to make this character, but put it in this century. That's true. Yeah. Mm. I've seen, pe- I mean, I'm sure we've all seen people do that a ton. Like, especially yeah. like they'll take like Disney characters and be like, yeah, mm-hmm. the Disney princesses in whatever time period is always super popular. Yeah. Yeah. So same thing with fantasy characters. Like just, mm-hmm. if you like historical costuming, maybe make a like historical costume that is a fantasy character. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like I said, that's, that's sort of what pre-Raph was. It was, you know, mm-hmm. Victorians romanticizing their idea of what the medieval time period was. Yeah. yeah. I think that's had a, a big influence on my idea of... Cause oh, yeah, definitely. So so much not, fantasy is based on, yeah. on pre-Raph stuff. Yeah. All those, uh, Waterhouse. Uh, <laughs> who else? I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head. <laughs> It's been a few years since I actually made it and did that research. I think of the dress that Mother Gothel wears in Rapunzel for some reason. I I don't know why. It's crushed velvet. That's why. (laughs) (laughs) You might be right. (laughs) Yeah. It's very it's very pre Raphael pre Raphael. Yeah, the shape more than anything yeah. made me think. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, you, you, like the shape makes me think of that. But yeah, the fabric does too. Mm-hmm. I guess fabric. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of fabric, digital fabric. I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, texture. Texture. Yeah, the texture <laughs> of it. Um, have you had any positive or negative, hopefully not, interactions while fantasy bounding or like memorable moments that? 
kind of make you think of it, or when you hear of it, you make makes you think of those times. I'm having trouble with this, the wording of this one. <laughs> 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 makes you reminiscent. That one. <laughs> no, I don't really, so I'm going to toss this question off. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nothing major, major, but often when you make a bit of an effort and do something a bit different, you might get a lot of, a few little comments or you look nice. Or um, also if I'm, you know, in a, in a corset that I've made that often gets compliments, I suppose one on the slightly negative, I mean, it's not drastic side that you get often get perhaps in a more full on costumed at an event or something, when you start chatting with a complete stranger and they're like, Oh, I love your outfit. They're very positive. They're very supportive. You should yeah. sell that. Oh. And then they give you a pro Oh, I, you, know, you could easily sell that for a hundred dollars. And like, yeah. I do know how much this There's more than me. that in material plus my time. But no, like, I spent three times that in materials right. alone. <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah. But I think I've learned just to love and smile at that. There's no point. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, oh, no, you go. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so typically, if I'm just, like, going and doing errands in whatever outfit I'm wearing, usually nobody talks to me. They might look <laughs> at me weird or approvingly i guess i don't know i don't notice <laughs> um but i always most of my clothes are not like typical office-y type stuff and when i am going to work and stuff and i am dressed a little bit differently i'm always worried that people are gonna say oh that's unprofessional um but that has never actually happened to me good um <laughs> so that's nice um, but yeah, I think the, the worst thing that has actually happened is like, um, people being like, oh, you should sell that. And I'm always like, no. And then they get offended. <laughs> <laughs> the confusing part is why do they get mad? Like, I don't, <laughs> they, they get yeah. very insistent. <laughs> yeah. I posted, um, something to Reddit once and. They asked me where I got the where I got the orange overdress that I made. I was like, I made it, and they were like, Wow, you should start an Etsy. And I was like, No. And they were like, yeah. I'm just trying to compliment you. <laughs> yeah, it's a compliment, but you would never be willing to actually pay what it's worth, so uh -huh. it's actually my compliment. Yeah, <laughs> I've gotten that from from a few things actually my my Skyrim book. I've gotten people like, Oh, you should sell that. Like, how much was it? I'm like, You don't want to know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like you really don't want to know what I spent on this thing. Um, but yeah, I think I haven't gotten that one personally, but that's because I usually the only times that I really was like all out was at Ren Fair, and it was usually mm -hmm. stuff that I had purchased. Um, because mm -hmm. I only started really sewing fantasy stuff like a couple of years ago, so I don't have a whole lot. Um, at the moment. <laughs> We'll see. But... I, knew, I'm I, like, I got plans. I was mentally picturing the hands. They would come up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I think one thing that is nice is when I wear fantasy stuff, it does give you that, like, it makes you think of something that either you pull the influence from, which is always really, like, kind of relaxing or comforting in a way like oh you know i'm wearing something that reminds me of lord of the rings i love lord of the rings that makes me happy so then like i feel like it helps improve like my mood for the day because <laughs> i'm like oh i look so like you know fantasy or like you know if you're wearing something maybe a little bit more i don't know warrior style like you know armor or like you know Geralt's clothes for example maybe you feel a little bit more tough which sometimes i think you know we can all use that little boost um or like you know if you're wearing something that reminds me of like an event like Ren Faire, um, that's always nice because I have such good memories of that. So like, I think for me, it's like a lot of memory inducing stuff, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> less, um, less interactions. I get, I've gotten a couple weird looks before, but like, I don't care about what those people think. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I definitely agree with the memories of then when you wear something again, it's 
Mm -hmm. yeah. really feel, oh, it was that day where we did the picnic and ran the croquet or whatever it yeah, was. Yeah, and... yeah. And you're just like, oh, that was nice. <laughs> Which, you know, I think we all can use a little bit of uh, extra positivity these days, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, truly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <sighs> let's see, was there anything else that you guys wanted to talk about? I don't know, we could pick Adrian's brain more, but... <laughs> Seems a little unfair. <laughs> Ooh, um, what about like, what are you gonna make next? Okay, well, for me, <laughs> spooky season is coming up, so um, there's gonna be a lot of that. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I think once now that the um cozy sewing is over my next stuff probably isn't so much fantasy bounding because i'm slowly working up on developing a few silhouettes and getting towards making my wedding gown <gasps> um, exciting that's exciting so the, the the petticoat that i made in i had a, a video that went up about corset pattern matching um but i also made this petticoat so i think that'll be petticoat but i also want to explore some other shapes and stuff so exciting <laughs> nice congratulations yes congrats <laughs> i did not have anything nearly that exciting going on <laughs> <laughs> i'm making a ren fair costume Ooh, yay. yeah so i'm i'm making a couple's costume for me and my emotional support viking who is my husband um <laughs> And we're going to be mother and father Christmas, um, oh. but medieval fantasy oh. style. I can picture that. So we're, I'm making like Santa hooplons, basically. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be really cool if I can get it done. <laughs> yeah. I believe in you. You can do it. Yeah. I have to get it done by American Thanksgiving. I don't know. Is that doable? Are you hand sewing everything or is it? Oh, I'm not hand sewing everything. Okay. I'm I'm mostly machine sewing. I'll probably be like overlocking all the edges so I don't oh, have to do totally. internal finishing. Kidding, like, <laughs> I, I live on my It's a fair costume. <laughs> I'm all in favor of overlocking edges. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm doing I'm using like the John of Gerlitz hoopland. Uh, pattern which has like a bunch of vertical seams so I'm like not into felling all of those by no. hand <laughs> so I'm gonna just overlock the edges and hope that my cotton velveteen holds up <laughs> I've I've done that with cotton velveteen and it's that doesn't shed as much I found and it's nowhere near as bad as like full on, full on velvet with a long pile like that oh my god yeah no it's cotton it's velveteen forever pieces. It's easier. <laughs> That's what my uh, current project that I'm literally just finishing up is made of. Let's just say there is tiny purple velvet fuzz everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. It was in my pin box. Like, <laughs> but um, yeah, I've got some some spooky sewing planned, and then um, some more fantasy stuff, fantasy inspired stuff coming up um, for winter actually. Um, like, I think I'm going to make a cloak for myself that I've been planning for like a year. And then I have this skirt that I've got planned that I will share details about later. <laughs> <laughs> it's very blingy. We'll just leave it at that. I'm very excited about the it. The metallic thread. No, actually. <laughs> shocking, I know. <laughs> um, nope, the fabric itself is, is blingy and I'm very excited. Ooh. It's, um, I think it's going to be really fun. Um. So we've got, let's see, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, well, I've got a question for all of you. Yes. I was just do about to ask you, for questions. Do you, well, <laughs> if the audience wants to toss some questions in, while that delay happens and they think a little bit, let me ask my question. Yes. Do you guys have either a favorite full outfit or a favorite single piece that you always wear? Which I actually already know Naomi's answer because we've talked about it before. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I'm happy to jump in. I'd say my, and it's kind, it's it's still evolving. But my f current favorite full outfit, which, um, I mean, maybe it fits more into costume than 
fantasy bounding really but my proper um hobbit outfit i made skirts and stays and embroidered apron and uh all the different things so i'm slowly building more to it i want to redo the the chemise and things um but that like my which i made sort of made some things last year and finished it at the start of this year um and that that hobbit outfit which i suppose then to tie it back in we did a, a photo shoot for it uh and then had a picnic and that's why we got engaged so it's like it, it's very special to me <laughs> <laughs> awesome um i'd say that my favorite um article of clothing is probably this gray kirtle i'm wearing um or maybe my orange surcoat uh i like to throw my orange surcoat over whatever like dress i'm wearing it's just a medieval style um open side uh um surcoat so it shows a lot of what you have on underneath so i like to put like a floral dress underneath um or um my kirtle uh, oftentimes i will just full-on dress like a medieval person <laughs> just to go to church or something floral kirtle is like yeah absolutely. and then i have um, <laughs> i've made a yellow floral um kirtle that i'll be putting out a video for next month and i like to wear that so basically i just have a bunch of medieval stuff and i just mix in my other clothes with it <laughs> and that's how i dress because <laughs> I hate bras, and kirtles don't require bras. <laughs> That's a mood, jeez. <laughs> I mean, like, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been wearing this a lot, too. It's really cute. Yeah, it's very nice and supportive. It's really pretty on the back. Let me see if I can Ooh, yes. show you the yes. back of it. <laughs> yeah, let's get my laptop down to do this. And it's backlit and everything, but, like, Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love it. That's really good. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so yeah, either this gray, gray kirtle or my orange surcoat. Yeah. So many times in video chat, I see you in that surcoat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's very nice. I made it, so why the heck wouldn't I wear it? Oh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a music teacher so that I can dress like a strange person. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because you love music I, I also love music but like <laughs> watch my video on sunday to learn about that yes, i need to i need to i think for me um i love this dress it's very like um i don't know it's fun it's like knee length and I would show you, but I don't want to get up. Uh, <laughs> and then it's got the, the fun sleeves. Anything with, like, a fun sleeve. I'm very into, yeah, so you like that. I'm very into fun <laughs> sleeves. Um, like, even, like, a, like a little, like, corset-style top with a fun sleeve and jeans. Very, very good. Um, and that, you, it's, it's really comfy. Um, or, like, uh, more medieval-styled, like, dress with like leggings underneath like a short short mm -hmm. version um basically anything where it can be comfy uh i'm pretty into but you know chuck me some velvet and it, it's happening <laughs> <laughs> very uh very obsessed <laughs> so if we look in a mirror and just say crushed velvet three times <laughs> <laughs> it is velvet itself. This, I think this is actually the only crushed velvet thing that I own. I think everything else is just like velvet velvet, but like <laughs> same sentiment, yeah. <laughs> like a little bit Does of our velvet audience... and chiffon. <laughs> did, we, did we get any questions in our in our little chat? Not yet, um, but okay. I'll put the question out one more time. If anybody has questions, we hopefully have answers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of chat about uh, favorite books in here, nice. which is awesome. I'm always uh, into that. I, yeah, I'm always wanting to read more fantasy. Yeah. Um, I am bad, and I just reread the same things over and over oh, and over again. Same. <laughs> I've read I, the I really time like four times. I can read Pierce books. Like, I started <laughs> from the beginning with, with Song of the Lioness, and I'm partway through that right now. <laughs> it's good stuff. I read that recently. 
now. I also I read them in publication order, not chronological order. Oh, so because some of the things jump back in time a little bit. I think the last thing I read was the Golden Compass, actually, which I didn't even think to mention because it is kind of like I don't even know what I would call it. fantasy. It'd be like fantasy with a little bit of like steampunk almost for the aesthetic of that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know. Sometimes, like, the, the young adult fantasy is hard to pin down as specifically. Yeah. Like, it's not quite high fantasy, yeah. but it's not urban fantasy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And man, do I love a good, like, YA fantasy book. Like, I never grew out of those. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I don't care that I'm not a teenager anymore. I'm going to keep reading these books because <laughs> some of them have better <laughs> slash any female characters compared to yeah. some of the classics. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. Honestly. Like I, I, I love you Tolkien, but women exist. You yeah. can have more than two women at a time. Yeah. We can yeah. in fact have more than That's two. Why, that's why you should read the Wheel of Time. Mm. Female characters all over the place. Also, I have to put it on my list. Nine Eve yeah, Elvira, if you know you know. That don't involve men in any way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But also a lot of conversations where they're like, I simply do not understand men. Yeah. <laughs> we got a good question. We got, where do you get your raw materials? Any good retailers slash artisans to look at? Well, I don't know if anyone is in Melbourne, Australia, uh, but I love Rathdown fabrics. They get a lot of remnants in from all sorts of places. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So this silk and cotton I was, it was a, a roll of, of a remnant fabric, so that's all they had, and I could order my, I could buy my few meters, and it's at much lower cost, and it means you're, you're, you're saving it from landfill. They have, like, big, big tubs of scraps of different things, so they got a silk section and all sorts, so mm -hmm. for anyone local, that's my recommendation. Um, I also have a wholesale fabric store in my town that I go to. It's called Fabriktopia. Um, but honestly, most of the time I get my stuff just from the regular websites that all the historical costumers get their stuff from. <laughs> like Fabrics Store, um, Fabric Mart, uh, Fabric Mart, Fabrics.com, Fabrics Burnley and Trowbridge, Renaissance Fabrics. Um, <laughs> also the thrift store, like yeah. get tablecloths. Tablecloths make really good, like, bottom weights. Yeah. Um, and curtains. Mm -hmm. and, so, and occasionally, Ikea. That, too. Yeah, Ikea has true. really good linen. Mm -hmm. And they also have cotton velveteen curtains. Yeah. And, and if you really want to see a fun project, a bunch of us, uh, <laughs> tomorrow, we, we made, uh, <laughs> we all got bought the same Ikea fabric and made outfits. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> That's tomorrow. I'm looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> um. I'm going to just chuck out, I get a lot of my stuff from Mood. Uh, I'm also going to put links to all the stuff we've discussed in the description after the call is over. So um, mm -hmm. we'll have all of that for everybody as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got another question, which is, is there a particular book, film, or TV show that you wish more people knew about so you could have more people to fantasy bound with? Wheel of Time. <laughs> <laughs> well, given that Amazon are making that, I think that's about to explode in people's consciousness oh, anyway. Oh, is Amazon yeah. doing it? I don't know that. Uh, yeah, it's coming out in November. Anyway. <laughs> I'm still holding out for someday they'll do an, an adaptation of all of the Tortle books. Those are really good, too. Yes. I want them to redo <laughs> the Aragon movie, but that's not going to happen, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really like. I wonder if they'll ever do a Dragon Riders one. I don't know. I would love when... that. Dragon Riders of Pern. That's actually a really good one. Yeah. It's older. I, there's a lot of people who probably don't know about it at this point. Oh, um, well, then that's one to say. Yeah. It's really <laughs> yeah. good. And particularly, I love the um, the Harper Hall trilogy. Yeah, there's the you know there's the original trilogy, and then the next is the Harper Hall trilogy about the the musicians. And it's I pictured a slightly younger audience, so they're just really easy to read. Uh, and then they go on and there's dozens more. <laughs> like that, the Harper Hall trilogy are my favorite. Um, there's also this series of books that's by Patricia C. Reed, who I cannot remember what the actual um, 
the actual series is called, but it's about dragons and stuff. I will find it and I will link it in the description below when I'm done. It's aimed a little bit more at like a young adult audience, but they're really funny and um, really good in my opinion. <laughs> but um, that's a good one. Um, it looks like that's all we've got for questions so far. I'm not seeing anything else. We're also getting yelled at by Google Meets. Yes, so. yeah. we are. We've got two minutes, and then it's going to kick us out. So, because I did not pay for the uh, the uh, premium shenanigan. <laughs> oh, Enchanted Forest Chronicles. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> Someone nice. Knows. I also have been reading books by N.K. Jemison, who is a black woman fantasy author, and they're amazing. Ooh. Cool. Send me a link, and I'll put it in the description. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that we can probably call it good for today. So um, thank you all for joining me in this wonderful chat. I had a great time with you guys. Um, if you think of any other references that you want to send me, once again, be in the description below. And um, yeah, have a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.